Hey boys and girls, Mr. McCauley here. This is a little video that talks about fractions and how they relate to decimals. Let's take a look at this number line going from zero to four and so on and so on. A lot of times when we talk about fractions and we talk about decimals, not always, but a lot of time it has to do with this space between zero and one. And it's a way for us to record amounts that are less than a whole number. Now, fractional and decimals can, of course, go past one, but a lot of times they kind of live in this kind of sweet spot. Let's take a look at this square, and let's imagine that this is the whole, and we're going to cut it up into different amounts. If I cut it up into 10 different pieces, each piece would be called a tenth. So let's take a look at some of this. For example, if I have one uh, piece cut up, one of the 10, that is, of course, one tenth. And if I had more than that, if I had three pieces cut up, that of course would be three, ten, three tenths. If I had um, seven pieces um, of the whole, then that would be seven tenths. And of course, if I have the whole whole, all of it, all 10 pieces would be written as 10 tenths. So let's talk about decimals now and how those fractions we just talked about relate to decimals. Okay, so if I'm writing a decimal and I don't have a whole number yet, I would say zero point something. And that something, that spot right to the right of the decimal is the tenth spot. So that's where the tenth number goes. So if we go back to what we we're looking at before, this is one tenth, and we would write it zero point one. And that one represents one tenth of a whole. If I've got three tenths, then the decimal would be 0 0.3, and 7 tenths is 0 0.7, and you can see how this is go. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. If I have everything, how do you do 10 tenths? Well, one thing we know about 10 tenths is it is a whole, so it would look like this. This is what 10 tenths would look like, 1.0. Awesome, we got this. Now let's move on to something a little more complex, but similar. What if, the whole this time is divided up into 100 pieces. What's the fraction this time? Let's take a look at this one here where I have 12 pieces out of 100. So the fraction would be 12 over 100. And in this one, the fraction is 25 pieces are colored. So it's 25 over 100. And here is uh, 73 pieces if I'm correct and that's 73 over 100 and of course here's the whole thing covered colored in so that is 100 um, 100 one hundredths, uh, 100 over 100 now let's talk about the decimal again we talked about the first space after the decimal being the tenth and the second space is for the hundredth section so what do these fractions we just talked about look like in decimal form well, we had 12 over 100, 12 hundredths, and that is what the fraction would look like, 0 0.12 or uh, 12 hundredths, we could say. Here is 25 over 100, and the decimal is 0 0.25, and here is 73 over 100, and the decimal is 0 0.73. And of course, we have um, 100, 1 hundredths, uh, all the pieces, and the way we'd write that fraction is 1.00. We can use two decimal places here because we know that we're talking about the whole cut up into hundredths. Let's talk about a few other potentially tricky ones. What about something like this? It is seven hundredths. Now, you may be tempted to write it like this, 0 0.7, but you would be wrong because that is really 7 tenths, and that's not what we have. Instead, we write the fraction 0 0.07. So that is what, um, that's how we write it. Another one you gotta be careful of, sometimes you may compare fractions and looking at these two fractions and say, oh, the one on the left, 0 0.07, that's higher, because there's a seven in there, and the one on the right only has a one, and seven is more than one. But of course, when you look at these two, in terms of what they represent. The one on the left is only seven of the 100 squares, and the one on the right is 10 of the 100 squares, so you have to be careful when you're talking about that. When you go to that hundredths decimal place, it's less than when you have uh, a number in the tenth place. Now, just thinking about this, 
if I have something over 10 or something over 100, I know really easily how to stick that and turn that into a decimals. The problem, of course, is not every fraction in the world is has a 10 or 100 in the denominator. Here's a collection of fractions that do not have 10s and do not have a 100 in the denominator. But there are still ways that we can use these specific fractions or these specific denominators and turn them relatively easily into decimals. Let's take a look at one. If you have two fifths, you want to, again, change it into a denominator that has a 10 in the bottom or 100 in the bottom, because if we do that, we know we can really quickly make a decimal out of that. Now, 5, really easily, I can change it into 10. So my choice is going to be to turn that into 10. When I'm dealing with fractions and I want to make an equivalent fraction, if I multiply the bottom by a certain amount, I got to also multiply the top by the same amount, and I get an equivalent fraction that hasn't changed the value. So for example, if I multiply the denominator by 2, I also have to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. And then if I go, if I do that, the I'm going to end up with 4 over 10. Now, 4 over 10, it's got a 10 in the denominator. I know how to change that to a, a, a decimal. That's 0 0.4. So this is a way I can use uh, this method to change fractions that don't have a 10 or a 100 in their denominator into decimals fairly easily. Let's do another one that we might be able to change into 10. 1 half. Well, I can change the 2 in the denominator to a 10 fairly easily by multiplying uh, the bottom by 5. That means I also have to multiply the top by 5, and I'll end up with 5 over 10. Again, very quickly, in my, in, I know that that's going to be 0 0.5. Let's try something a little bit trickier. This time it's 7 over 20. I really can't turn that easily into a 10, um, so I'm going to instead go to make it into 100. Well, I know that if I have 20 and I multiply that by 5 times, then I will get that 100 I'm looking for. So that means I also have to multiply the top by 5, and I'll end up with 35 over 100, and again, I know from my work earlier that this ends up being 0 0.35. So there are these other fractions I'm going to quickly go through as well that you can also turn into um, decimals fairly easy. If you have 50 on the bottom, well I can multiply the top and the bottom by 2 and I'll end up with 24 over 100 and that will translate to 0 0.24. If I have 25 in the bottom, I know I can multiply that by 4 to get that 100 I'm looking for in the denominator, and that will this particular uh, question will be 0 0.80. And again, 3 quarters or 3 fourths, if I multiply the top and the bottom by 25, I will get that 100 in the denominator, and oh, that should be 75, not 73. Hey, there's a blooper. <laughs> it should be 75 over 100, sorry, boys and girls. And that, of course, should be 0 0.75. Oh, I was doing so well until the end. Anyways, that's it. That is how you relate um, fractions into decimals. Good luck, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed this video.